the grand final is back. G'day, I'm James Clements, not to be confused with one Justin Lepich. I actually went through a list of like ginger lions, ginger swans and Source stuff. Merit. It's big source merit. Yeah. Yeah. Love a bit of I think merit. you've already used Justin Lepich this year. I have, year. but I'm just going back to the well. It's okay. fine. <laughs> I also was, uh, I was asked to use uh, G'day, I'm Lockie Ash. Uh, but that's a bad joke because it's GWS. I don't know why you bothered with that. Anyway. Well, that's Bob's so- fault. Bob's is Bob. Oh, is that Bob's is Bob? Yeah. yeah. Sure, all right. We'll get to that later. This is the <laughs> AFL Today Show brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. I'll tell you what. I might need a Bex and a lie down because I've got footy fever. Not just footy fever. Grand final fever. <laughs> and joining me for this grand final midweek madness show, a pair of local weirdos only loved by their mums. Yeah. And apparently, I don't know, some chick from Canada and <laughs> another lovely, lovely na- lady named Steph. It is local weirdos, full blown footy nuffs, AFL experts, some might call them not going to be me, Alex Donnelly, noted Swans fan. Yeah, very excited, very happy. I've had to take some armor force this morning because I feel a flu coming, so I genuinely have it's finals just footy fever. fever mate. It's just footy fever. I think you've probably got a fever from how bad all your Brownlow takes were. And the oh. Stats Boys in the middle, the little fella. Yeah, I've also had some bad Brownlow takes. Didn't go it's too almost as bad well. as your haircut. Whoa. <laughs> oh, <laughs> back. Be careful. With that beard, I'm gonna get some scissors. I'll be, I'll be right back. You can, you can try. Yeah. <laughs> Just no, you not. can't reach my beard. What are you talking about? <laughs> Come here, Jim. Come here. <laughs> Jumping up and down your tip It goes down to your legs. So anyway, <laughs> today we have news ticker, grand final news ticker, which is always a good one. So Sunday night show, and then we had the Monday Brownlow show. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there was not that much. News. Side note, we all nailed Crips. Just we all picked Crips, yeah, that's true. We nailed the Crips pick to settle down. Yeah. Like no, P, a- no PDD action here. <laughs> it, the was. Same. Jeez. it was lube everywhere. <laughs> it's just like, how many what? <laughs> Jeez. Anyway. That's uh, a different uh, it's podcast. We didn't have too much news over the weekend. No. We have plenty of news to dig into today. 100%. We've also got some grand final year Nas. Oh, yes. We're going to talk about the best story of the team that could win this grand final. There yep. are only two teams. We're going to make a case for both. And we'll finish oh, up with some. But yeah, that, that, that's fair <laughs> exactly. enough if you go for Sydney. Yeah. We're going to finish up with some finals odds uh, brought to you by Top Sport as per usual. Yes. So, without further ado, <laughs> let's get into it. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, get around all the social channels, because the grand final is almost here. It is the best time of year. If it wasn't raining and horrible down here in Melbourne right now. It's going to be good on the weekend. We're clearing up, Jim. Yeah, it's going to be clear up. It's going to be shockers around here. I'm going to hold you personally personally liable if it is. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's going to be great weather. We might have to sacrifice you to the footy gods, I'll tell you that much. (laughs) Not against it. That just means throwing him in the arrow. No, I'm at one with the footy gods. Throwing him in the arrow in a left shark (laughs) costume. Sounds right. How does Katy Perry actually practice in the rain out there right now? Well, it's on Thursday, so thankfully she's got till tomorrow till it hopefully clears up. Mm. I... I, uh, it's I'm, a bit of rain. I'm happy to uh, volunteer to help. Yep. Anytime. Like I'm you know, I'm an ideas man. That's what I <laughs> yeah. do here, right? You're so, just gonna hold an umbrella? Just call me left gym. <laughs> Hello. Why is that, like, that sounds weird. It's gonna be good. Can't wait. Anyway, before we do anything else, there was a bit of a thing on Monday night. Yeah. Mm. Real dodgy. Let's go to the brown mode! <laughs> How good was that? Cripper! Wins his second brown though. Carlton fans are up and about. Just got over the line, didn't The he? Carlton got... Army had to come out and go, what, just because he sets a record pace, has 45 votes, you all want to change the voting, <laughs> you cowards? How about someone be as good as Patrick Cripps? Could it be me? Every fan base had a sook on Twitter. Oh, it's oh, not I agree, fair. Though. Everybody loves him too much. Yeah, because he's a gun. Shush. The worst part was the Dacos yeah. fans. Oh, <laughs> he's too popular. Your man scored 38 points. How is that not a sn- How is that a snub? People saying it's a snub. He-, he set a record and didn't win. It's not a snub if you outpace everybody in the history of the bloody game. Get a hold of yourself, Collingwood fans, you sooks. Anyway, uh, so Cripps <laughs> is very, very good. He was Should not, not that, have got no, 45 no, votes. That no, is a joke and no. a half. Can votes, we, can we not say points. that? This is easy. I said votes. This is easy. 45 votes, if you watch Carlton all season yeah. like I did. Like I did too. To my too. own chagrin. <laughs> it made sense. Mm, no. There's like. No way. There's like three games we go, ah, maybe not those. That's fine. But every time. And this was the case we made on Monday's show. Every Carlton win, he's like in the vote. How many wins? You had 13 wins. Exactly. That's 39. Yeah. Like, I don't think he's 
No way. 45 is this way This is not over. the greatest individual season no. that we've ever seen. No, and that that's, doesn't matter. But, no, but that's what, that's, that's what but this that, is no, saying it is. No, that's not, a, that's not what it's saying. Sort of is, yeah. No, it's, not, it's saying that <laughs> of all of the seasons of AFL. Or is it saying that you've got a very good player in a very, in a very average crap team? team. Because exact, if you drop no, in- that's exactly what it says. So that was going to be mm. my next point. Who's taking votes from him in any of those games? Well, absolutely- no, Sam Walsh probably once, but nah. if you drop in, Errol- Sam Walsh had a wildly yeah. average season. Cripps had a very, 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 very good season. One of the best seasons you were sort of like of a standalone player. If you look through all of his stats and where he's in clearances, no, I agree that he was ahead of everyone. Bah, 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 yeah. He's either first or second, nonstop. It's all good. But they could also give uh, some votes to Weedering, Kerno, because they're, they're actually good Sam, in their position. But but Brando, Tom DeCarney so didn't get the three votes in that win where you belted Geelong by a million points. Yeah, it's an outrage. That was, there was stupid. There was a lot of oversight. <laughs> the point being, people were like going, oh, I thought it's not the best season of all time. No, it's not. But he had the best season in a yeah, wildly, deserved to win. wildly mediocre that. team mm. where he was very clearly the standout player. Yeah. It's an easy yet. He deserves like all the votes, but maybe not all of the votes. There was like some where he just like, this is squirrely. I think just in a general idea, the same as the Lockie Neal win last year, you just look at this and go, I don't know if we need the umpires voting on this anymore. No, we, well, which we, I'm well, happy I'm, to talk about that. The yeah. one I was just most- We are going to hit this in the NRs. Yeah. I'm just saying, but this is still the news piece. Dacos, 38 votes. He got mentioned. two votes against the Swans where he was the 41st ranked player on the ground. It had no effect whatsoever. Darcy Cameron was arguably second best on ground, didn't get a vote. It's just like, oh, Dacos had 20. He had a good night. No, he went at 15%. Exactly. We're going to get to this as oh, well. Uh, it's weird. Yeah. Being, that was the one I got really angry about. We've also about. got like the weird mix up between Haney and Warner. Yep. Uh, this yeah. Has happened, that happened twice. This has happened a couple of times. The, Dac- not the, the Dacos, Dacos mix up, up on King's birthday. The, he went off as a, as a subbed off and then still got votes, in, even though Josh really was the Josh best Dacos player. had like 38 times. Uh, that yeah, genuinely might have been a mix but up. But it's like, yeah, uh, Chad Warner got a vote for 19 disposals and nothing. <laughs> Heaney had 27 and two. It's like, uh, you looked at the wrong blonde. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not wrong. We'll get to that later, but very, very, very briefly, the Brownlow, like people go, oh, we need to fix it. I think... There is a very, very solid case to go. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced that we need four dudes who have run a marathon That'll, who come off, don't look not, at stats, yeah. and then just go, ah, oh, probably him. I'm happy not to look at stats, but just have someone in the crowd that their sole purpose is to watch out for the good players. So the umpires have too much to worry about. NBA already. MVP. We're going to touch on that anyway. NBA MVP. Yeah, that's true. It is voted on by a pool of 100 people. Mm. Or, you know, you just have the coaches' but votes I, in the I play. I like the voting no, coach, game. I, I still think the coaches', coaches no, votes no, and players' the, association are the, the two best votes, awards. The coaches' votes still wildly biased because you've still mm. got the coaches going, I still have my like, agendas and stuff like that. If you have – that's the thing about 100 media members. It basically – it gets to a median where you have – There's a, no bias. You have yeah. a bell curve of where the biases fall. No, I, right? I agree with that. And so you'll have some at either end of like, hate the guy, love the guy. But the vast majority of that hunt will probably fall somewhere in the middle. And that's what you want. You want a median vote yep. of who was the best player across all these but things. But I like the voting each game I do, I do love the voting each yeah. game. That's the sort of point. It's I fun. think yeah, we should have different. 100 votes each game. <laughs> 100 and I volunteer to have a week long round. One vote. Uh, Al McCallion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two votes. <laughs> Al Mullally. <laughs> and away we go. It's going to be great. Trust me. We're getting 100, 100 votes no, every game. Either don't way, know about that. from the night, it took forever because they padded it out with a whole bunch yeah. of absolute <sighs> rubbish. No, but they took forever every year. I get it, but at the same time, in this it started at ten past seven, not ten past eight. In this day and age, we don't need a wildly, stupidly long, padded out Brownlow ceremony. The weirdest part I found was that Andrew Gill and Dylan smashed through the actual votes, almost to the detriment of the people who got those votes. Like it was yeah. almost like second. I turned around at the end of it and went, "Wait." Zach Butters had 29 votes. I didn't realize because all of his votes came in the second half of the season. Yeah. Andrew Gill and Dylan was like speed reading. They do that. Them yeah, when they know. He got three best ones in a row. It's like, good job. Did he got a hairy Andrew Gill and Dylan. He had, a, he had a hairy, but at the same time, as I think someone may have tweeted out, couldn't have been me. Uh, in fact, <laughs> it was this sort of haircut that screams out, yeah, I used to work in finance, but I just really like law. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a lawyer, but finance is much more my vibe now. It's like, yeah, it's just the haircut of the worst person you know. Like, it really is. It's just <laughs> absolute really vibes. Like I'm just like, nah. That guy, if aura is a thing, he has like ne- negative one million T aura. Yeah, like he million. has absolute zero. Like, borrow some from Bruce. I'm actually mm. okay with like a CEO of your football league sort of being just the the straight man. Like it's the Roger Goodell of the NFL kind of thing of like, but there's also <laughs> a point where you go too far and you're like, oh, he just sucks. What are we doing here? <laughs> 
Like zero personality, zero flavor. Like if he was because we've come off Gil. If he was hmm. a if he was a like a, a serving of food, he'd be like poached chicken breast. <laughs> There's nothing. Yeah, there. I thought he was, right. o- he's oatmeal. Nil. Oatmeal. Oatmeal is wildly exciting compared to Andrew. Gillen, <laughs> poached chicken is like, what is this? Nothing. Like it's just you eat nothing. Like it's ridiculous. Anyway, outside of that, Angus Brayshaw was fantastic. It's great uh, speech. Th- yeah. It was weird though. Yeah. They didn't die. They just retired. To be, he did. It was that, a bit too far, but I yeah. Love the Angus Brayshaw speech, but the in memoriam. It's like, dude, they're alive. <laughs> they just retired. Did they didn't it? die. But there was no grease fire. When did, like, what are we doing? But remember they accidentally killed someone off last yeah, year? They did. <laughs> and the, the guy, the like, guy, hey, I'm on TV. It's, it's, oh. it's Reg here. I'm actually still alive. Yes. Did one of his best friends like, you're not dead. Yeah, I'm alive. Eh? He's alive, you <laughs> idiots. Uh, outside of that, there was a great, one of the great memes that's already popped up. Like, it was basically like it was shot from the office. It was Chad great. Just like, Ted Warner and, and then then horse in the background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, was just like, he was proud dad. It was. Uh, and outside How of bored that, were the Swans players, by the way? They, in, in Sydney on the yeah. waters. You can't drink. Yeah, you're yeah. drinking waters. It's, it's, it's a bit hard. fun, though. It's hard. It's hard. I still remember, like, like, in you know, years past in the nineties, like they'd have like cut like Paul Kelly when he won the brown lottery he was in pissed. Sydney. It's just like, all right, party time. But <laughs> if, yeah, if you're this, about to win, maybe don't get pissed. No, well, no, he was ninety five. Yeah. He, he said at, in his speech, he's like, round fourteen, I had to start drinking water. Yeah. <laughs> that respect. Cripps obviously he runs away with it, gives Would. two speeches because again, we, we Gil is not in charge anymore. Why is Hamish involved? Because he, Channel 7 love him. I thought, I thought, I know lots of people were banging. I thought he did and pretty well. the but, lady. Yeah. Oh, Beck Madden. Beck Madden. Telling, uh, come back from Vegas alive. What the hell are you doing? Port Adelaide players are literally in the room. That entire thing was shocking. It's the like, oh, oh, Vegas. And everyone in Brisbane is like, don't mention Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else is like, don't. What are you? No. Yeah. That's just gross and mm. weird. Like, if you put Stats Boy in charge of that, he would have done a better job, and that's saying a bit. I'm just yeah, saying. I would be great at it. I don't know what you're talking about. He also looked great in a dress. But yeah. Yeah. same yeah. point. We've seen him in a tux, too. Hamish was yeah. horrible. When they actually had the little Oz kickers out there, that was fun. But when yeah. they had to – why talk to the goal of the year, Harley Reid? That was horrible. He doesn't know how to talk. We get it. He's a footballer. He's what do not you mean? Ma- you have to talk to him. You want to walk. Hey, Harley, was that cool? Yeah. Was, how'd you do it? Oh, yeah. Good, sick. <laughs> you don't need to dig any deeper. It's like, no, that's true. What was going through your mind during when you kicked that goal? What did you do after it? What are you going to do with the, with the thing? Boom. What are you going to do with two million velocity points? That's Just exactly what the question is. Put me in charge of this and I will fix the AFL. Simple as that. You don't need a 47 hour <laughs> Brownlow telecast. Like, what are we going to do now? Well, let's cut back to Dan Sultan with a song that no one asked for. I love yeah. Dan Sultan. He's, I absolutely love Dan Sultan. He might be a great dude, but I did not need to hear three songs from that I've hung out with Dan Sultan. He's a legend. I love Dan Sultan. Not I did not that, need that many songs of Dan Sultan. <laughs> anyway, uh, Brownlow, 45 votes, Crips, two two speeches because they're just like, all right, hey, we're chatting with you. Yeah, it was Amish. a bit awkward, yeah. But Why I thought it was still again? good. Yeah. So dumb. Love Cripper. Amazing win. 38 for Dacos. Hilarious. Uh, Sarong going top five. Yeah, Heaney I think well deserved, yeah. Heaney not leading at round 15. No, he did. He was equal. Oh, was equal, he? wasn't No. Uh, He'd fallen off by then, I think. Mm. He didn't he got next to no votes after the suspension, and but the three swans over uh, the three swans combined for what 78 votes. Yeah, that's, that had, shows how that's why they're in the grand yeah, final. Exactly. Obviously. That's what I also had, yeah, I think. Because Heaney was equal leader heading into eleven. Because so he didn't he, yeah, he didn't get the three in opening round because exactly. they got him and Chad mixed up. Uh, outside Stupid of that, as that. someone's pointed out, Lockie Neal had a black eye. Yeah, I put that in there. That's just funny. It uh, looks even worse. It looks I saw, really bad. I saw it last night. Classic uh, hip would didn't do much, but he uh, injured his best player. Poked him in the eye. Poked him in the eye when uh, he was celebrating his uh, goal. Was it Cam Rainer's goal? Yeah, Cam Rainer's yeah. goal. So what are you doing, Hipwood? Come it's on. pretty fun. Uh, and I guess the last thing. So I mentioned goal of the year and mark of the year. As we've sort of talked about. We all about, know what the mark of the year was. We've all talked about time and time oh, again. I thought that was a bit stiff for uh, Jamie Elliott. Oh, Jamie Elliott should have won that anyway. But Heaney's was the best mark. Heaney's is the best mark this year. Oh, right. You're saying Jez's that. was the best goal. It's the mark of the year, not the mark of the regular yep. season. Grow a pair AFL and do what you say. Yep. Simple as that. <laughs> it's not rocket surgery. And even Harley Reid, like Collingwood fans like going off top about like, but who oh, cares if you get gold here? No one like, cares Like Dacos was two out of the three. That's yeah. just stupid. It's he funny, shouldn't he's have got had a flag. like two of them anyway. And the Harley Reid one, it's like Mick McGuan's tweeting about that going, mm. I did that every single time. Ex-Hollywood player. Anywho, I'll fix the brown low, leave it to me. <laughs> All right. I charge a very I'm reasonable down. consulting rate. Just saying. Just <laughs> In the high six figures. Slab of beer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> 20 bucks. Anything else from the brown low? I don't care. Can we move on? No, it's just more about, like, <laughs> were there any surprises, like, team leaders? I obviously, oh, uh, yeah, Trelaw beating Bont. 
There you go. Bont. Well, I thought it was going to be close, but Bont was robbed off a lot of votes. And Petrarca beat Gornicus. Yes. Trucks, uh, Again, somehow, just rucks don't get sh- this is exactly votes. It. Backs don't it's get ridiculous. votes. Forwards Gorn don't get votes. was very, very Stupid. good in yeah. a lot of games that they actually still won. So the, I saw like a, a like a like, a, like I think it was Wheelo ratings or something, and they've got like a whole database of things. I think They're it was good, like yeah. Brody Grundy was negative eight votes, and like Cripple was like plus nine, and I think Gorn was there too, and a few others like, mm. yeah, you got one vote. Probably should have had ten. Exactly. Like Cherry. Like according yeah. to like player ratings mm. and things like that. So Marshall was like the only ruck that sort of did yeah, well. Yeah, that, couldn't make the all Australian team. St Kilda. Yeah, it's also average. because, yeah, Rowan Marshall stands out more, I think, on that team because yeah. they're also wildly well, mid- How mid-working. handsome yeah. did Jack Steele look in his tux, by the way? Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. not bad. I also, look, I'm happy that Dacos didn't win for the simple <laughs> fact that he's also really handsome. And it's like, that's just unfair. His jacket was horrendous, well, by yeah, the way. Yeah, lapels, lapels stuck. Yeah. Um, that, the lapels sucked. Him, yeah, it's him like Dacos look- has already won a premiership. Yeah. He's wildly, stupidly handsome. He'll win a Brownlow. He's going to win one. Him, yes, but him yes. somehow not winning a Brownlow by like getting, getting a week for tripping something them. would just be hilarious. <laughs> right. Still lots more news. Yeah. Heaps of news to get through before we get into the NRs and gear. Dan Houston is like, can I please go play in Victoria, Port Adelaide and Port Alone? Ugh. Here we go. After saying that he wanted yeah. to stay, he absolutely lied to the why media come and on, their face. Why come on, Rebula? I'm not going anywhere next year, I which is Port technically true because he's leaving this year. Port were like, oh, can you just sweep this under the carpet so the media's off our back? Like, Ken's, they're already on our back about Ken. And uh, he's absolutely lied. Six weeks ago, he said that he was staying at Port. And it was, was like, no, it was oh. during the finals. It was oh, after was like it? the first finals. Like, yeah, I'm staying. Mm. Like, what are you doing? He went on Warren Treadray and some other idiot show. What mm. did you expect him to say? Yeah. Well, that he's well. well he's not going to go on that show and go. Yeah, I'm out. No, you <laughs> just say I don't want to talk about it. That's, that's the, like Luke. Yeah. Luke Parker no, said the just, same you thing. Play, you talk. This is great. It's the AFL hello tradition of, of lying. lip service. <laughs> Absolute yeah, yeah, lip service yeah. every time because the AFL is just like this weird netherworld of just never saying what you actually want, and it's like dancing yeah, around annoying, any yeah. sort of actual trade request. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're getting locatious though. Yeah. they are. So not, we're going to get to locatious in Houston, a second. Yeah. But uh, Houston is like, yeah, want to play in Victoria. I'm also happy to stay if uh, you can't get it worked out. You're like, oh, Sounds okay. like we'll it's like, do you guys get it worked out? out. Uh, North and Carlton are the two front runners at the moment. North this morning apparently leading the race because we can offer more. Stats guy might get a win I'm over Jim. I'm very excited. If, if we get Houston or Parker or both as a North fan, I'd be very, very excited. You just don't to, need more kids. No. no, no. I think we need a yeah, experienced player, especially a half back, just someone that can actually hit a target would be, would be throws, lovely. Yeah, throws um, McKercha straight in the midfield, yeah. which is good. So really hoping that gets out of mind. But every time we've ever gone after someone as a North fan, I don't want to get my hopes up. So I mean, the last person you got from Port worked out great. It was yeah, Jared Pollock. Pollock. He was half back <laughs> as well. Oh. Houston, look, I think it's interesting because I think he is the sort of guy who certainly helps your ceiling. Yeah, absolutely. He Leadership, certainly I helps. Lift your floor, mm-hmm. and he might not be a wild like out and out superstar, but he's really it's pretty really, close to us. Really superstar, good. Yeah. I mean, you're handballing it off to him, eighty out from goal, delivering it to Serbia. Hey, Feeling pretty yeah. good. He can get, he can score goals off half back as well. Hope the Blues get him. Uh, sticking with the power. So this is like one of the things that we didn't bring up on the Sunday <laughs> show when we talked about the failings of Port, mm. and especially like what's their upside like heading into next year, and uh, <laughs> what's that forward line look like? And I was sort of like in the back of my head as we we're talking about that, I'm like Lukosius. Like it seems like it was already fate accompli that he was going to Adelaide, mm-hmm. and I'm like, he could also just go to Port, and boom! Literally the day after, it comes out he and Connor Rosie are best mates. Well, that doesn't oh. come out. That's been well known for a while. Oh, I didn't even know that. Like yeah. the bloody he's, Aussie, he's his best man at his wedding, which man. is like, like next oh, month. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, there you go. So Lukosius is like, yeah, I'm, I want to go to Port. And I was like. Oh, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. I don't mind this. So apparently Adelaide offered him more coin than Port, but he's like, hey, I get to play with my mates. And, and obviously and like, at Port would look better you guys, than Adelaide. You guys kind of suck. <laughs> yeah. That'd be so a good fit, I think. I reckon it's a great fit. Yeah. Mm. Coach is on that forward line next to Willie and Mitch Georgiades. You yep. can just get rid of Asala. Get rid of well. Dixon. Love that. Uh, other news, sticking with Port. <laughs> Ivan Soldo is like, yes, hello. Is Ivan Soldo. <laughs> I come to Port and it is very bad. No, oh, because well, he's apparently Russian. Ah. Yeah, apparently, yeah. Yeah, according to anyway. some. So he's like, fight. I don't want to be the second ruckman. He's like, all right, where do you want to go? He's like, St Kilda. <laughs> Why did he go to Port in the first place <laughs> like, when they already here? had Jordan Sweet? No, they didn't. They got Jordan Sweet at the same time. Well, no, didn't they get Jordan Sweet? But like, uh, maybe like a month before. No, the trade period goes for two weeks. Stuff. Anyway, right? sort of. Yeah, he's a good. He's yeah. good. Yeah, he I, I don't want to be second one. ruck. I'm going to St Kilda. That was literally yeah. my joke yeah. I just said. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Doing? We'd move past it because Stats guy was like. Oh, I interrupted. That's true. That was yeah. weird. Uh, 
It doesn't seem to make much sense. No, that that's very weird when they've got one of the best rucks in the comp. Yeah. Uh, and they'll be like, Soto, if he does play, he'll be resting forward. Why wouldn't you go to Geelong? Yeah, You'd be Geelong? number one there. Yeah, yeah. Geelong seems like the obvious. Well, apparently, it's because his partner also got to Adelaide. I was like, yeah, this place sucks. <laughs> She should try the barbecue joint that we went to. Yeah, she that probably should. Yeah. That was so and, good. Uh, the Yvonne, bull- if you like, if you want to stay, we can pass on some records. Yeah, just the bull- I, got, I found a good bagel spot. <laughs> the <laughs> ball. Yeah, <laughs> just jump on the ball. Uh, but Soldo, you leaving? Sure. Sweet like, was fantastic. Yeah, Sweet's the, the number one right there. Yeah, who yeah, cares? Definitely. Bailey Smith was hanging out with the Cotton On crew. <laughs> the one players and some of the Cats players at the prelim, and uh, I love it. It's oh yeah, the Bulldogs weren't happy. Why do you think that is? Is it because he's one of their players still? For the moment, it's like he's already a cats player with all the things happening in the last couple of weeks. And it's uh, like if I why can't they just you work for one like you know TV station and you're already going to the next TV <laughs> station, ah, and yes. you were still on that existing TV station. The TV station's like, what are we doing this for? That's weird. <laughs> and here you are, amazing. Uh, but Bailey Smith, the Cotton On connection is real because he's like a Cotton On ambassador. So yeah. he was sitting with like the Cotton On head honcho. Yeah, with um, with Mithin, all the other cats. Yeah, so. what's he miffing? Yep. So that's pretty fun. He's going to the Cats. Yeah, we know. Caleb well, Daniel to North Stasbury. Yeah, Alex just pointed this one out this morning. I had a look on uh, Twitter and things like that. We are, yeah, Cal Toomey said that we are going after him as well. I don't know if I would want both Houston and Caleb Daniel, but I, I do want some- You just some play block, him on a wing. Just because I'd rather go after some tall blokes. Obviously, Caleb Daniel is nah. one of the small- our team is so small. None of our big guys are doing anything. But you're right. I, really, I do think he's a very good player, though, and he should be playing for – he could play for most teams, Caleb Daniel. So I would want him. Like but I'd rather us – all the rumors are Parker, uh, Houston, obviously he's really good, and Daniel. We need some tall players. So that's the only thing I'm you worried about. you got Jack Darling. you got Cam Zerha. I don't care about Jack Darling. He's, <laughs> he's crap. Zerha is, should be a third or fourth tall. He's not – Oh, really? Yes. Oh, anyway. Geez, I'm, I'm glad we've got you here. Yeah. Oh, anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy that we're going after players like that. But He's not stepping on jokes. He's pointing out the obvious. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, ah, right. How to step on Here you go. <laughs> This is Jim's fault, this next this next point. Is it? Yeah. Nah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more grand final before we go all inside football. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Katy Perry. This is a uh, fun story where it's like uh, the Brisbane Lions, like, can we practice at the grand, uh, the grand final venue? And they're like, Nah. nah they got, get they do get they get one they get one run there, they wanted a second training run there. Sure. Baby, you're a four, you work. So. Surely the Lions get priority being the grand final team no. over Katie Perry. That annoys not. me. That annoys me so the, much. They get one- Sing off. <laughs> Sing off here. Yeah. Chris Fagan versus good- Katie Perry. Let's do it. <laughs> I was going to say humor cluggage. Who would have a good voice? Joe Danaher cutting a rug versus Katie Perry. <laughs> Joe Danaher is left shot. Charlie Cameron singing John Denver songs. God, I hate that song so much. <laughs> I like that song. Two, Jim, what two songs do you have the most? It's probably Country Road. It's Sweet and Caroline. It's probably Sweet Caroline. Fair enough. No, I just hate the lines, apparently. But anyway, um, <laughs> the Katy Perry stuff, looking forward to it. Uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. This story that actually came out this week was like, uh, they're like, oh, yeah, so she can play all her new songs, right? And the AFL's like, Wait, no, no, no. no. Everyone in the crowd's going to be silent going, no. what is this crap? So I, you know, spent a very, like, 20 years as a music journalist. I was going to say it was Katy Perry. Uh, we actually, so Katy Perry is an interesting sort of look into the world of music journalism. I do remember getting asked, why don't we have Katy Perry on the cover of our magazine? I'm like, because we have, like, a scary of credibility and, like, all of it. To be honest, all of their shows have already sold out, so we don't. Fair enough. You don't have. They're have not advertising. Advertising, so yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's, like, that's true. That's true. We're pay for play. That's how it rolls. Uh, this was not Triple J magazine. This was Beat magazine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> inside football again. Um, <laughs> but then, like, sh- she just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, just one yeah. of those transcendent pop stars of the tens. Yep. And it's it feels very AFL to now get her in 2024. It's like actually ah, we Super always Bowl, get like, them after eight yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're like, getting her on the downside. Like, actually, <laughs> we had Ed Sheeran pretty early on. That, that was, was the only one we've had. But that was also a Gadinsky. Yeah, yes, look Gadinsky, up yeah. But Gadinsky but still, and yeah. Frontier were like super tight with Ed. Of course, you know, yeah. They made it sort of. But happen, that right? that so, was pretty early on. Yeah. But the we're AFL, not getting someone on the way up. No, the AFL not. is like the meatloaf's kisses of the world. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, We're basically pitching it to Jim's dad. At least <laughs> like, <laughs> Katie Perry's like, like, who does James's dad know? And he's like, oh, no, kiss. Yeah. Blondie, dude. Could they get Blondie? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> they have kicked around Blondie's name before. I'm like, this is just old people. But Katie Perry. This is the entire thing. She is a wine mum specific mm. person. So she's this generation's pink. They're very no, similar she's, age. She's, right? like, pink's actually surprisingly older than you think. Yeah, that's what she I mean. is like she's the she's the middle ground between pink 
and those wine mums. <laughs> she is the middle point between Taylor Swift and Pink. Ah, there ah, we go. I, I like that. I like this that. is why I got paid the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's what his whole article was about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, mostly. That's where I was getting to with my point. I can't wait. I think it's going to be great. Oh, yeah, I think it's going to be great. Look, if it's better than Kiss but not as good as Robbie Kiss, Williams, Kiss it's was a good awesome. show. As in, not their singing, but their performance was nuts. Exactly. You need, it was awesome. You need you performers. Need a, you I don't need, care how they sing. You also need songs that everyone knows. And you, you need can, stadium yeah. performers and you need three songs that people know. Yeah. yeah like it's easy as that. Robbie Williams has that. Kiss has that. The Katie Killers has have that. Yeah. that. So, like, yeah. bands like that. Like Didn't you get a like Delta that. run in for Robbie as well? I think Delta yeah. was a part of it. Yeah, she did no. the Kylie Minogue spot. Yeah, she did on uh, Rock Kids, DJ. Kids, what is it? Kids? Kids yeah. yeah. Anyway, good music chat. Yeah. I, we're just going to spin this off and just do music chat. Yeah. <laughs> we need anyway, Katy Perry on the show. Uh, last little thing about the uh, grand final before we do a little bit of inside footy. The Big O obviously officially out for the Lions. That's so already. sad. He's, been, he's had a great year. Darcy Fort it, will be replacing him seemingly. So. Can't wait for all the articles in the next three days. Going, everyone in the squad deserves <laughs> a medal. They do. I am on the opinion if you played for that team that During the year, year. Oh, yeah. it's the same as the championship ring, you help them win that title. 100%. Simple. And lots, a lot more staff should be. If you're going to call it a footy club. Yeah. Oh, thanks, well, Gary. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to call it a footy club, everybody in that club should get a medal. Yeah, yep. I agree. Including, yeah, like staff. I wouldn't mind trainers, if, it's like, if it's like the APL where you've got to play X amount of games yeah, to that's get fine. the medal. But AFL is pretty short, so like. You can, yeah. you can have one game. Seven. All right, yeah. last little bit of news, the uh, inside footy vibe. Love this. Luke Darcy said to quit channel, say, oh, I've called my last game. And everyone's like, oh, geez, that's that's a real shame, Luke. <laughs> geez. This is your fault. It probably is. Why? Because he talked to him. Because Jim went off on Sunday. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That's happens every few, Sunday. I've had a few thoughts about Luke Darcy over the years. <laughs> uh, so he said to, like, bounce from Channel 7. Yep. And, and Channel 7's him. like, that's fine because we're going to afford to pay Everybody else. I know. Now. Everyone from Channel because 9. Because they're just also seemingly poaching Caroline Wilson. Apparently they <sighs> threw all the money in the world at her. And just, so, as well as Kane Corns. So Corns goes first. And Hutchie. And now Hutchie. Oh, because I forgot it. Really? The media I, company. But Hutchie, I know, yeah, I know he's media. Hutchie's media company produces uh, the- Classified. Footy Classified. Classified. Yeah, but it does it alongside it does it does alongside Eddie's company, which is Jam TV. Jam TV. That's so right, yeah. there's this weird sort of mix where Caroline Wilson- That's such a weird mix. They man. had like a handshake deal apparently set up and then Channel 7 came over the top and went, money. <laughs> <laughs> and started throwing. Um, so she set to join Channel 7. But apparently she's got a six-month non-compete when her contract runs out in December, so she can't do anything to like June. Oh, good. Should, that'll be good. Well, she'll have plenty of time to, to cook to up her. weird yeah. things about Alex to Clarkson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can't wait. Uh, and then- Finally, I mean, outside of that, you've got Luke Darcy stepping aside, Caroline Wilson going to Channel 7, Kane going to Channel 7. Uh, Channel 9 is sitting there going, why have we just got Tony Jones? They got, got Lloyd. No they got Lloyd and Eddie. Yeah, Lloyd. Yeah, but they're struggling oh, now. My favourite thing was like Lloyd was like, oh, no, this show is bigger than the names. I was like, no, it's. In terms of ratings, it is, I think. Not for the rate. No, Isn't it's not. It? So the bigger than the names involved. Oh, the names, Not when it's no. like the two people who started the bloody yeah, thing. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So I now think. the show is going to be Eddie, Lloydie, Sam McClure, and Damien Barrett. Brutal. Yeah, that's Absolutely. Well, Barrett probably goes with Hutchie. To be fair, I, I don't want to watch Caroline Wilson, so maybe I'll watch it. Maybe Absolutely I'll locked in to just the world's most boring footy <laughs> conversations. I love it. There was a great tweet about talking about if this was 20, 2004, Jack Ginnivan would be that a was superstar. From, oh, that was from Ralph show. Horowitz. Loved it. He he used to a good call, yeah. he, used to, he was the executive producer on the footy show back in the day. Instead, we're talking about Caroline Wilson and Kane Corns and like Hutchie. It's like, yeah. yeah. Cause that's how the that, state of footy, that's why I love doing this. Cause this is just <laughs> same. idiots talking about footy. And like these pretenders go, no, we actually know footy. It's like, they're being entertaining. <laughs> Footy's fun, you jerks. We can talk Stop about pouring it. pouring me fun. out of my bloody brain. Exactly. <laughs> anyway. So you, bit- you can lock it in that the Monday night footy show will be like Kane, Caro, Hutchie, and someone else to take on 360 instead of uh, Footy Classified. Yep. Can't wait. Well, at least it's better than watching Joel Selwood and Trent Cotchin. <laughs> I won't be watching any of them. I do. That's like yeah, the weird little It's the upgrade. That's the weird little addendum to those stories as well. It's like, yeah, uh, for some reason, Trent Cotchin and Joel Selwood and like, like whoever else That's is on that show has and like James Brayshaw haven't gelled. Really? Yeah. Wait for it. Why is that? Why do you reckon would that? Why? Why would that be stats? Just they're the most deadpan people going around. And yes. Yeah. Like they're James like, Brayshaw can have that. fun, but he's just. We don't need serious James Brayshaw. Absolutely. No hiding, way. Exactly. Absolute hiding the nothing. Yeah. Right. And the last little bit of news that just came through: Callum Wills was meant to be a uh, test for training today. For the Swans. So the Swans now have a selection done. So he got through training okay. He what, got Alex was still on the side of him. No, we'll, we'll talk about it in Yenars. And the decision, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. the decision now rests with John Longmire 
and Ooh. the Swan Selection Committee. Nice. All right. Midweek winners and losers of the week. Midweek winners. Easy one. Patrick Cripps. Yep. Two-time Brownlow medalist. Set a new record in terms of Brownlow votes. Got it Triggered off a lot of people. I'd That's also, an absolute win. I'd also say Bob Hill and Harley Reid, extra 50 grand and 2 million velocity points the each. 2 million velocity points is so good. That's um, Jamie Elliott. They get you a toaster. Like, no, no, 2 we'll million velocity we'll, points. Look, look, look at this. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> no, Jim, you don't understand how flybys work <laughs> we, and the velocity <laughs> points. I could use that to fly to Adelaide twice. <laughs> no, all right, settle down, everybody. <laughs> Did you see how flat Jamie Elliott was about missing the. He, yeah, he, he didn't, didn't care about the money. He's like, pretty flat about the points, to be honest. I think Dane Swan made that point, right? Like, are you kidding? That's a better thing than the Brownlow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> swap out your Brownlow for two million bucks. Uh, loser, would. the fans. Oh, yep. why is that? I don't know. Someone wrote it down. Oh, the broadcast on Monday night. It was. A we were forced to sit through that for three oh, hours. It wasn't that. It was long. It it's was a, horrific. It's the so same Alex, every year. Alex pointed out the exact. There's such an easy fix of just starting the count at seven ten. <laughs> yeah, I, you have I agree the Brownlow red carpet before that. I guess their entire thing is like Channel Seven. You've already got. Seven two seven, mate. You've got all the. That like, was my point. Exactly. You've already got all the digital channels you need. Like mm. you can just have that running as much as you need. Red prior carpet to it. at Away six. You p- if you don't want to watch the news, red carpet at six p.m. You can roll that through till seven. On you come to the main channel. If you you know how they do that during the race yeah, day or whatever. Straight up, you want to keep you watching. Don't need the red carpet like after the news. And no, like, just no. compounding how long. And it's that's happening. what I mean. But by doing that, you're taking an hour off. Because also, what about you think of kids that are watching it or tradies or whoever that want to watch it, but then they have to get up the next morning really True. early. True. You're finishing it at nine thirty rather than ten thirty. Yeah, it sucked. Well, well, it was I'm like eleven. Like, I've got to like you know watching Crips win a second brown. I'm like this. What are you, squids going to wake me up at like yeah. five thirty? <laughs> I was literally watching at the end just for the Horn Francis versus Zach Butters count. I mean, it got to around twenty three. My like, oh, stats guy sandwich. You mean? Oh yeah, no, I haven't even talked about me. that. No, him. It was me. It's not you. Sandwich. What are you stats talking guy. about? We weren't on the sandwich. No, it was we me made and the stats sandwich guy. a million years ago. No, you. Hey, check the tape. Wait, are you we all talked right? about this ages ago. Are you? I was I stats guy sandwich. We've been talking about this for like three weeks. This is Horn Francis versus Zach Butters. If I have stats guy we, sandwich. We cut the you tape. still owe me a sandwich from last year. All right, we're sandwich negative then. So because <laughs> I are reckon. You, are no, you this, no, this goes We've back. We've talked about this like what? 10 times. I'm pretty sure we go back about three months. <laughs> And we were talking about it. Yeah, but you this. didn't have a sandwich, but I literally said, all right, let's do a sandwich. Yeah, I was we, so we shook. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> you need some sleep. <laughs> I need a sandwich. I <laughs> sandwich me now. I forgot about that sandwich. I, but I was like so adamant that Butters was going <laughs> to oh, yeah. smash You agreed sandwich. with me, but then then I said, oh, let's do a sandwich, bet, And then we shook on it. Uh, uh, I was shout, bang. I was in front. I was like, oh, I'm feeling it. And then Butters went, bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Like, God damn it. I forgot right, about now, before we do it's anything like 20, else. 28, 20. Do we want to do yeah, nahs before we do the grand final? <laughs> yeah, I think we narrative. should. Yeah, I think we'll we should. Do yeah. Yeah, nahs yep. Because we've been talking about the brand <laughs> and stuff, and we'll keep on doing that. Yep. Time for some AFL Today show. Yeah, nahs. Yeah, nah. The AFL Brownlow voting system needs to change. Yeah, nah. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna go nah. Just need they need to change the way that they look at it because That's they've what I come mean, out and I said they mean. don't look at any stats. They asked to, and the AFL's like. Nah, it's cool. I don't think they need to look at stats. I just think they need someone that's not involved in the game because the, the umpires, it's such a hard game to umpire. They have to concentrate the whole game. They wouldn't know if a player on the outside is doing well. They, they really concentrate on the midfielders. Like a forward and a back would get more votes, I think. If there's someone in the crowd, an umpire in the crowd, they can do the votes. I think there is, like, because it's become such a midfield award, oh, award it it's become ridiculous. Mm. And, like, I love Patrick Cripps. Lockie Neal, a two-time Brownlow medal winner as well. Nat Five. Like, it just, you keep going on and on and on. You're like, yo, there are other players. Mm. And I feel like, as has been pointed out time and time again, uh, you go back throughout the years of, like, Gavin Wanganeen winning on yep. like, the scant amount that he had. Like, as I mentioned in the live bit, I, the IG live bit I did after the count, like, Dipper and <laughs> Dipper Dip- and Diesel tied 17 on votes. 17. Yeah, and Diesel was not happy. Have you seen that video? And it's, like, <laughs> absolute chaos that you're like, yo, yeah. <clears throat> It's because there was a wider spread yeah. of votes. Like there's a lot of players. really good players that don't get votes anymore. Like Ashcroft didn't get a vote. Willem Drew didn't get a vote. I uh, mean, Ashcroft played like seven games. Yeah, no, no, but he's point, a good player. Anyway. Mine is Brody Grundy getting one when the yeah. first half of the year he was like the most dominant yeah. ruckman in the yeah. competition. And there was Not a even just of, like dominant, but impactful. Yeah. Like the there way that the, he's changed the entire team's game plan. Yeah. And it was obvious from like day yeah, one. Yeah, there's a lot like, of players yo. that should get votes. So I think there's like key defenders that should be getting votes. Like sometimes you like watch GWS and go, Sam Taylor just Sam says, Taylor, so yeah. Brent Daniels didn't get a vote. Yeah. That's a joke, yeah. It's just stuff like that where you're like, 
there's there's a better way of doing this. And it's like, oh, but it's always <laughs> the way we've done it. That's the worst reason to ever do anything. It's the worst <laughs> excuse. Exactly. Ever. Literally ever. Like, you know, that's <laughs> led to basically all of humanity's problems. Problems, yeah, exactly. Over the years. Exactly. Uh, We're getting deep. And I think <laughs> the NBA MVP voting system, uh, if we're doing that almost game by game by game, you probably don't need 100 media members. No, but- we probably don't have 100 media members. No, we, no, could, we might be. Vote. Are we in the top? We, I think 100? we'd actually make the I top. We'd make, I'd reckon we make that. Uh, <laughs> but I think there's a simpler, more egalitarian way that we could do this. Yep. And I think the game has evolved to this point where you, you've got four umpires on the field, and we're still just going, "Hey, uh, who was the blonde bloke? Yeah, which one was that?" Uh, it's probably Chad Warner. Yeah, it's Chad Warner three. You're like, what? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like the Dacos, like I can't believe how stunning that King's birthday Dacos thing mm. was. Like that is just so egregious that you're like, that's the warning bells. Like the Crips 45, you can easily figure that out and just go, dominant player. Wasn't there a game he had 19 in So that was actually votes? the Essen yeah, game, a joke. I think. Yeah. But at the same time, you watch that game. It would have been impactful, I think Ralphie, but yeah. Ralphie pointed out like his disposal efficiency, kicking efficiency was like four, 19% or something. Whatever, he was still in that game and he was still ha- like the clearance stuff, whatever. Yeah. At the same time, you look at these things, there's these little warning signs every so often. But the Dacos King's birthday game, you're like, yo, what is happening mm. here? Well, that's also like last year, Haw- Hawthorne Sydney, Joel Amati plays a half, kicked three goals and got the three votes. It's like, what are we doing? Yeah. Bont, Bont in the first four weeks, so there was the 32 <laughs> and two in round two and then gather yeah. round against the Cats where yeah. he dominated that game. Did, did Jezza get the three for that game? I mean, Jezza got the three. I was about to say, it was that him was or Jezza. Okay. Like, he should have got three. But yeah. it's like, how is he not in, in the votes? The, yeah. Yeah. In the yeah. Libra, I think. And we were there watching going, oh, Bont. Bont was oh, taken over that game, yeah. It's bizarre. So I think- At least he got the three in the game. He dominated it against uh, Collingwood. I think there's yeah. at least a way that we could do it a little bit better. Yeah. And, and the fact that they haven't changed it once, like, come on. Should the Brownlow be the Friday of the bye Oh, I always put this one. Yes, it should no. be. No. Why have it? The, why have I, it? I think it's great. Grand final week, you've got such a big build up, so much happening. I really like it on the Monday. That's my opinion. But yeah. Have it in the bye week because then at least some of the players can have one or two beers and enjoy it. Why not both? I reckon we can have what? another <laughs> awards night. We've already got on it the AFL awards night. And I think we should be making more of it. Like that's when you give out your. If you're going to make it mark of the regular season, <laughs> the mark of the home and away you season, you give it out there. Give them out then. You give out player of the year for like whatever else you want to do. You want to do rookie of the year, rising star, all that sort of stuff. Boom, that's your Friday. They night. do that on already on. But you could put the uh, everyone can get on the teams, all Australian, maybe. all Australian maybe on that Friday. I don't have mind. that yeah. all Australian blow that out. That's awesome. Away yeah. you go. All right. And then Brownlow on the Monday. Because like I do appreciate the Brownlow. <laughs> I like it on him. Yeah, it's <clears> nice on him. Because like you come out of the prelims, mm. you got the Monday night, you're like, Brownlow, let's go. Because it just I think sets it's up good. the rest of your grand final week where you're like, yes. Everyone's talking about the grand final. It culminates in mm. the grand final That's rather like. than basically having the AFL go radio silent for a couple of, not radio silent, but like it gives them another chance to just go grand <laughs> final, grand <laughs> final, <laughs> grand <laughs> final, <laughs> grand <laughs> final, and everyone loses it. Yep. There should be an award specifically for defenders, aka the Golden First Bang! I'll chuck that in there. Just yeah, nah. Absolutely. Yeah. Surely we all agree on that one. Yeah, because you got the Coleman for the forwards. Coleman has it. Yeah, the forwards. So you can, everyone goes, oh, the forwards don't get votes. They at least have a Coleman. Defenders get absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I think that Golden Fist would be great. Everyone would love the that in honor of Spod. Underclass would be AFL. 100%. Like, My favorite the time is when, they, when they cut to like Jakey Lever and Stephen May just sitting next to Maximus Gornicus. Yeah. And you're like, ah, oh, I can't wait for them to punch on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just do something. Like, where's Milkshake when you need yeah, it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. 100%. Mm. The defenders need their own awards. How good would that be in honor of Spud? That'd be well, great. Well, yeah. Spud, you know, just the Spud for the Golden Danny, Fist. Just call it the Danny, Danny Frawley yeah. Golden Fist. That'd be great. Dick, I can no one would be against that. Uh, Katy Perry will be great on Grand Final Day. Yeah, nah. I'm going to go nah because I don't want to <laughs> see a train wreck and it'd be funny. Oh, you dog. Yeah, she's I'm always gonna doing yeah, well. I'm going to say yeah. Like, I don't know. The lip syncing's off. You got, I think it's very entertaining, so it'd be good. Was well, she good at the Super Bowl? I can't even remember. Yeah, she was great. That was eight yeah. years ago when she was at That's why I can't remember. The Pepsi Super Bowl. I remember like, because they, all they did throughout that NFL season was just bash you over the head the fact that it was the Pepsi Super Bowl. It's like, yes, oh. we get it. <laughs> we get it. Grand final day entertainment should be Aussies. That's no. one of my favorites. I'll chuck this in there because I knew Jim would want to say something it. about this. I say yeah. I say yeah. So this is one of my all time. I've got like two things that I love hanging my hat on. I think <laughs> two. I got a few. <laughs> Sixty two. <things. laughs> a few things. But NBA arenas and like NFL arenas, 
NBL arenas, AFL stadiums, you should only be able to play uh, songs by artists from your localized area. <laughs> okay, that's another that's another step. Yeah, you we've right? always talked about that. Yeah. So NBA teams, if you're in Boston, you've got Boston artists. That's great, Aerosmith. <laughs> You kids on the block. <laughs> can, we, can we just repeat this from the six times a year gyms? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, this. Like, These are different questions. But that's like, it. But yeah, Adelaide gets the hilltop hoods. We get yeah. it. We understand that you get the hilltop hoods. And like we saw it during COVID when John Damon is from Queensland. With Perth, with Perth, you had Eskimo Joe, you had Birds of Tokyo, you yeah, had yeah. Baker Boys, stuff like this. Like, it was good. Away go, it was awesome. I mean, wish when Shepard and finally get the grand final, we'll be able to have bricks. It'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but. <clears throat> The, I think that was such a good showcase of what Australia can do. Mm. And grand final day, we don't have to go specifically localized to Victoria, obviously. Yeah. Or but Brisbane and Sydney. I think Aussie. Yeah. Saying, like because you need to book this in before going. Ah, oh, it's the week of the prelim. Who from Brisbane or Sydney is around? It's like oh, we've got Regurgitator and can Powderfinger get back together in a week? <laughs> yeah, they can. Right? Yeah. So, uh, but instead you're stuck with Custard and Regurgitator and June Rats. Uh, but. I love the idea of just like big upping Australian talent. Why not? And I think, or yeah, I think G Flip was a big part of the one from last year as well. AFLW uh, half time. was that halftime? I think there's half AFLW grand final. So I think G there should flip. be at least maybe G Flip a, did halftime in the 2022. Mm. I think there should be oh, a great. carve out where we have an Aussie spot. Yeah, maybe you could still have the overseas, game, but also like Aussie a bit more. Aussie, just yeah. roll out someone with the hunters and collectors at halftime every year and play Holy Grail. <laughs> well, we're yeah, always gonna good. have Holy Grail. We're always gonna have up there because yeah, yeah. So. Anyway, I'll so just who's, yeah, who's yeah, Hunters and Collectors should have a standing date on Grand Final Day. It's like, all right, we're going to roll you out there, Mark. And Gary <laughs> give us it. He's like, oh, holy crap. <laughs> Off he goes. It's going to be great. Um, I think, like, in terms of the rest of it, like the entertainment, what do you prefer? Like the pregame, hype everybody up. And uh, if we are. Yeah, I think pregame. We're going to get to the, uh, the timing question in a second. The pregame is it hype enough? Would you like it halftime to extend the game and have like no. so Super Bowl halftime? I, I like pre I like pregame gets everyone pumped up. Yep. Halftime people want to get food or drinks and stuff. They'd, I think before the game is perfect. All right, yeah, there we go. Then two thirty is too early for the grand final. Yeah, nah, nah. Oh, I forgot about that one. Uh, Five fifteen, lock it in. Let's go. No, nah, it's perfect. I think it's perfect. You get a whole day out. I just like it. It's like a whole day. It's right in the middle of the day. You can do whatever you want after. It's great. I like, I like it during the day. And you, and we've had really good weather you know the, for grand you know finals. 5.15 is during the day, so that's great. Yeah, but then it's at night. It finishes at night. I want it to finish okay. during the day. Uh, the uh, thing uh, is 5.15. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, he's, he's being obvious. 5.15 finishes at the perfect. No, I agree oh, with that, but not, on. not for grand final day. For his grand final day, it's like, ah, oh, sick, 2.30. You're so right at the end of it. And you're like, it's 8.30 and I am <laughs> hammered. No, I like, agree with that. But that's just that's tradition. So hold on. My problem is, so like, because going this way, if the Swans lose... And I'm hammered. I just want to go home. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sad. It's it's six oh, o'clock. No, you gotta keep Whereas going. Whereas if keep going. that's way worse because the that's best what I mean. Is, if it's eight o'clock and I'm going home, it's ah, it's fine. I can go to bed. No, if it's eight o'clock, you're like kicking on. We're gonna drink the pain away. It's gonna <laughs> that's be awesome. exactly right. That's exactly how you right. do it. <laughs> what I'm is this up. amateur hour? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, rookie over here. <laughs> like at eight thirty, it's like oh, I can't believe we lost. <laughs> we're going to the pub. Like, <laughs> exactly. Whereas at five thirty, like what are we gonna do now? Like go home. They get, a, get a palmer, get more like, beers. Oh, we go to dinner and just be sad together. It's like, nah, <laughs> we're partying. Because this has been my entire point. I think it gives you the 5.15 start is the perfect lead in. You can have the late, you can have the barbie that leads into it. It's all Arvo. You've had a few tins. You get to 5.15. The hype builds and builds and builds and builds. You got Katy Perry on at like four or something. Yeah. It's a firework. She's going to roar. It's going to be <laughs> gnarly. And then the game happens. And then you're like, right, it's 8.30. The game is done. How trash can we get? We're going to find out. We're going to the pub. We're kicking on. Who knows what's going on? I love the 5.15 start. That's all right. Everyone else who doesn't is a sook. <laughs> Grand final specific ones. Should the Swans pick Callum Mills? Yeah, nah. Nah. Yeah, I'm going to say nah as well. If he, pull, if he pulls a hammy or something, no, oh, no. Nah. It's a hallowed tradition, yeah. yeah. Hallowed tradition, hallow tradition of Sam Reed. Reed. Oh, let's go. <laughs> well, Callum Mills also went into 2016 with an issue, as did Jared McVeigh. I, How'd that work out? Not good. Great. What are you talking about? It's awesome. <laughs> that wasn't Pick the reason, probably. Come on, horse, don't be a cow. Nah, I, think, I think that they would have learnt from mistakes of the past and that – Robbie Fox didn't do anything badly on Friday night when he came on no, as sub. No. The Swans played probably what from the last six weeks, it was the best performance that the Swans have had since they turned it around. 
Why change it? I know it's Callum Mills and it's your captain, but all through the season, ever since he hurt his shoulder on Mad Monday last year, he pings a calf in April. Yeah. He plays one game that he misses because he's sore. It's not like if it was Isaac Kearney, you're playing him. 100%. But it's Callum Mills, and if he didn't have the captain next to his name, you it'd got- be done by now. He's like, he's not playing. Yep. You can't risk him because he's going to chase Cam Rayner around for two hours, and the hamstring's probably going to go again. Gotta pick your captain. Don't risk it. <laughs> it's nah. Nah. I agree about? with Alex Watson. Gotta pick your captain. <laughs> Always pick your captain. No. Nah. Are you where are you picking him? I'd pick him. Okay. <laughs> blood nut to blood nut. Uh Sydney will have nightmares from the Geelong grand final demolition two years ago. Yeah, nah. Nah. Ooh. They've already come out and said that was two years ago. We're a completely <laughs> well, different. Of course they're not gonna go. We're we're crapping our pants. No, but, uh, but it's these players have got fifty more games into them by now. They how serious is. It's a joke <laughs> it's, question. It's my team. <laughs> I literally put this in there just to run up Triggered. and yeah. drag it. <laughs> Okay. I, I think they, a little bit, like the start, as you said, the first quarters have been really bad for Sydney. I think the start, they'll be like, oh my God, it's grand final day again. Then they'll be okay after the, after quarter time. But at the start, Chad Warner's going to crack in and just be like, gonna, let's um, go. Uh, yeah, bounce them at the start. I think they're a super young team in 2022, yeah. and I think mm. they are much better now. I think they'll be fine. Lions will use strong grand final uh, I wrote, I wrote this performances really from last year. As a confidence booster. Yeah, you have mangled this question. Well, so I was so. going to read it out. But different, Are the Lions feeling confident, confident because from of the, last year? Because they played really well last year, obviously. Uh, and yeah. last week. And last week, so yeah. I'm from, from last year, I'm saying no because it's a completely different game. No, like, I think, but I think you, playing you in a grand final, in yeah. MCG, grand final day, you yeah. all experience this That's as what well. I think, yeah. And I think you've now won another final away from home, even if it mm. was at the uh, showgrounds or whatever. Like, they know that they can be competitive at the G. I think they'll take spot. confidence from last year because they played really they'll well. They'll take more from last week because they won. Yeah. Not what I'm saying. I think they'll think about last year as well because right. they played well. Good one. Let's do it. With that in mind, who has the better story <laughs> to win this grand final? Stats boy, you kick it off. Brisbane. I think there's a few reasons. you got Chris Fagan, obviously an old coach, uh, just on his way out, get a, get a flag for him. A lot of people, I think David on his King. his way out? Is he going to die? Just, it, well, maybe. He's Are pretty old. Chris <laughs> no, of course not. What do you have against old people? I yeah. love Chris Fagan. Is this elder abuse? <laughs> I wouldn't be on this show. Are we aiding and betting <laughs> elder abuse? From How's Nana right? McCallion going? Was that a check on I wouldn't her? be on the show. Are you walking around the mean streets of like the northwest of Melbourne just punching old people in the head? Sometimes, yeah. It's gross. Anyway, I love Chris Fagan. I really want him to win a flag. I think put him in the ground as well. This is psycho. Lucky Neil, I think all superstars. Deserve a flag. You got Bont got a flag. You, Danger got a you flag. You really like the word deserve a lot. It's weird. He does. He, he, does he? he he's been awesome. He's carried uh, Brisbane on his back in uh, multiple seasons. Then the other one that you brought up, Jim, which I really like that you can talk about as well, Joe Danaher. Obviously, Essendon hasn't won a final in 20 years. He leaves Essendon. That'd just be funny if another Essendon player gets success at another club. So, Brisbane. And also, I've, I used to not mind Sydney, but Alex talks about him too much, so that's why I'm going for Brisbane. I like that you like, <laughs> used to like Sydney, then you met Alex Donald. Yeah, legit. And you went, ugh. Oh, too so much Sydney. God, I, hate Sydney. I actually still don't mind Sydney, but yeah. Alex, it's clearly the Swans. <laughs> like, <laughs> as you look at Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> wait, let me get this straight. You're trying to tell me that you think the Swans have a better story if they win the grand final. Oh, if I was him, I'd be saying the exact same thing. I, for one, am shocked. <laughs> Shocked, I tell you. Anyway. Why, why is that? You've got Brody Grundy, who got bounced out of Collingwood because they were just they messed up their salary cap and I, he was the scapegoat to throw out that's along true. with Slevo. He's gone to Melbourne. They've screwed him around and played. Who'd they play last year? Was it um, Harrison Petty in the finals instead of him? Yep. And Josh Shackey. What's Josh Shackey doing? So <laughs> he's got that story behind him. For Longmire also, it's his legacy. If he loses another grand final to go to one and five as well, having a grand final record LeBron-esque, of- LeBron-esque. Yeah, like yeah. Being two and four- Puts him in the Scott, Clarkson, uh, yeah. and Dimmer areas, winning that many because he's done it over a sust- sustained period of time rather than being a flash in the pan when he got there. You got blokes like Dane Rampey as well, servants of the game, the story of him getting overlooked in four drafts, and then also for players like, I don't know, Chad Warner, Heaney, some of the you know touted future superstars as well. Good for them to get a flag on their resume as well. Jake Lloyd, I think, as well as Rampey, they've lost three. Ooh, so for them to win to get one, one yeah, yeah. I didn't as even, well. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's some fair points. Yeah. It was a Jake Lloyd's haircut and mustache combo. Mm. Great mustache. <laughs> really? You like yeah. mustaches? As we Oh, and for Lo- oh, Logan McDonald as well, after he got dropped when Sam Reid was under the injury cloud two years ago, bounce back and have a big grand final performance yeah. as well. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> Logan McDonald also looks like he's been dropped on his head too many times. Whoa, back. <laughs> nah, he's all right. <laughs> Who has the better story if they win the grand final? 
Well, it's clearly the best team in 150 years. Oh, he's back on the Sydney, Sydney Swan. No, it's Brisbane from fifth. They were, look. Fifth, yeah. That's the other way of looking at it. In terms of, you have two awesome competing narratives for this grand final. If Sydney, the best team we've seen in 150 years, dominated the competition all year, uh, win one million games straight, randomly lose to, the funniest story and the best narrative <laughs> out of this actually is probably if Richmond are the team that beat Sydney. Richmond. It's not the yeah, one Sydney team. That is, that is Sydney going to win. Not the oh, one team, on. but the team the that best team no one seen thought. 50 years got beaten by the wooden spooners. Love that. But Sydney dominate all season, apart from like their weird sort of five, six week stretch where they just like yep. put the cue on the rack and went bored. Uh, and they have this really awesome core of young, fun footy players. Yep. It's rad. You can sort of see how it's laid out. It's like they deserve it. Because they were the best team in football this year and of the last 150 years of Aussie Rules footy. Simple as that. Since we're booting around a bloody possum skin. Like, this is how good they are. Yeah, mongrel. Hey, there's no way they could lose to this upstart Brisbane team. <laughs> On the other side, you have a Brisbane team that was written off 47 different times this yeah, year. Yeah, a lot of people said- you Cooked themselves. Fagan was out. What was it, two and five after round seven? Mm-hmm. Absolute chaos. They were 13 <laughs> still, six, six, and one heading into round 14, I believe. They got all the way up to second, then completely cooked it. <laughs> lost to Collingwood. Lost another game in there as well, didn't they? GWS. Dropped GWS, down to yeah. fifth. Now they're back. And then have to do it the hard way. It's three the hard way. They've won three finals already. They've done it three the hard way. This is an awesome story. Fagan, this rad sort of weird mix of like Kai Lohman, Will Ashcroft, young dudes. Young dudes. And then the old heads. You've got Zorko, Dunkley, uh, Lockie Neal. You're an awesome midfield. you got a very like – you look at uh, – he likes planes, Jack Payne. Uh, and also their forward line, Chucky Cameron, Joey Duckett, Eric the Hippie Hipwood. Like, it's a really fun story. Who's got the best story? <laughs> Me. No, I just I just laid it out for you. It's awesome. Well, wait, wait, Adam, I'm going to win You didn't answer final. the question. Are you, I liked how you've laid out both, but which one are you saying? No, no, no. Which one are you, are you saying has the better story? Not the best Brisbane's team. has got the best story. Okay, there you go. That's what the but, question was. <laughs> in my brain, how are you going to remember the 2024 season? Well, uh, how am I going to? How does your brain? Yeah, but remember, no one remembers how 2016. Does your, how does your brain remember season? Ask me that on Sunday. I remember them by grand final wins. No one remembers that how bad the dogs were at certain times in 2016. They won the flag. They won the flag. So if Brisbane win the flag, I'll go, no, I won't go. Oh, Sydney are the best team in 150 years I because they it. weren't because they lost the grand final. That'd be a real shame if they did, wouldn't it? <laughs> so my favorite thing is like you look at Melbourne. So they win the flag. Look absolutely um. Beatable. Yeah. And then look wildly Big asterisk, beatable. big COVID And flag. then you look at that and go, hang on a second, what was actually going on with that team? Mm. And it sort of does colour your perceptions of it a little bit. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you feel good about that? I think I'd come out of 2024 <laughs> going, the Swans were the dominant team, they should have won. Yeah, but you won't remember that in 10 years' time. <laughs> I don't know. You will, of course. But it would be very, very if funny. If you're not a Sydney fan. It's a fun season. This one's a dominant all 2024 and lost to Brisbane in the grand final. Anyway, we'll find out. I was out. like, shut Come up. Up. Right, let's do I some, uh, before we bounce, let's quickly check in because tomorrow we'll have uh, the Thursday team. night team show. We'll have our teams, but we'll have our final Live, picks, yep. uh, vibes, bets, etc. because this is, of course, brought to you by Top Sports. So, a quick check in with some of the odds at the moment. <laughs> Stats boy, the Swans are still favourite. Yep, dollar seventy two. You got uh, a minus four and a half uh, in the in the line there, and then Brisbane Lions two dollars twelve. I think that's about right. Everyone would say Sydney being the better team, as you mentioned, but the odds are really close because Brisbane have been awesome. The over under one seventy two point five. Ooh, what was the under last Sydney seventy nine seventy seven? You going under? Going under. Oh, I'm still in it towards over because that last year we said we said it'd go over and it was like eight, just, well, like yeah. eighty to seventy eight yeah, or whatever true. it was. So we could be in for a game like that. Yeah, maybe. Ju- and last, year just was, over. last year was pr- last year's grand final was kind of low scoring. It yeah, was eight, like eighty to seventy. It was random, yeah. like a quarter of really a lot of goals yeah. and then a quarter of not many goals. Yeah, because it was a wildly entertaining game, but it was yeah. crazy. Lots of score. hangers and goals <laughs> in the uh, In terms of some of the player, well, the Norm Smith. Do we want to look at that yet? Picks or? as well. I think we can at least have a kick around. I think there's six people who can win it, isn't there? What do you got? Heaney, Neil, Warner, Gordon, so, Zorko, McClung. So Swans, is that it's it? probably Heaney, Warner. Gordon? Gordon, probably. Potentially Grundy if he absolutely dominates in the ruck. Mm. Darcy Fort is not a bad ruck. Yeah. I know he's obviously the second try. I but Brody Grundy Fort. should be walking should be, in yeah, like, should, yeah. I am the man should, into yeah. this game and but should be looking Darcy to dominate. Darcy Fort is probably Neil McCluggage. <laughs> Zorko. Ashcroft. 
Ashcroft is my I don't yeah. Ashcroft's sort of most. I don't, think, I, I don't think Zorko because he's going to get the tag. Mm. Bobby Hill vibes Chucky Cameron. Ooh, we'll just kick. That's, four the, or that's the pat. That's the that's Papley, the Papley Chuck, as well. Yeah, Papley, Papley Chucky so. Cameron call. Yeah, don't mind that. Uh, how can our best mate Cheeks win it? Fifty-one to one. <laughs> Uh, He's not flashy enough. He does all the eight, hard work. Eighteen tackles, thirty disposals, two goals. Because also we need to. You need to <laughs> remember back happening. to 1987. This is the David Reese Jones award. So you need. You also need to remember this is an umpires. This is media people. Yeah. So if James Rowbottom <laughs> shuts down Lockie Neal, yeah, but he's not going to get the vote. Telling me there's a chance. Yes, if he shuts down Lockie Neal. Keeps him to less than 25 Boys, touches. Boys, we are loading up on. Kicks a couple of goals. James Cheeks robot. 51 dollars. This is going to be awesome. No, thanks. Well, that sounds what? like Iguodala. Getting, Iguodala. I'll take Iguodala. Uh, I love it. If there's not, like, so I think there's, as I sort of said, but Rainer's a really interesting one as well in the Bobby Hill role. Uh, he was Rainer, fantastic yeah. last yeah, week. True, true. Uh, Loman, Loman and Rainer were incredible. Uh, Archie obviously popping up. Joey, Joey Duck is very good. 26 bucks. Because at his best, he can take a game. I'm going to a big forward, one a uh, uh, Smith. That's yeah, a good, I can't I'm going to have a look. So I feel like it's much more likely that someone like McCluggage, who's priced at the moment at 15, uh, which I think is great because he's the sort of dude who has like these games. Like, how is he like the best player on the day? And you go, well, he's very good. Yeah. So mm. it's fine. So Heaney at the moment is five dollars. Lucky Neil six fifty. Seven fifty for Chad Chunley Warner. Whoa, where rule? He's at nine. Zorko fourteen. McCluggage fifteen. Simon Madden may have been the last there you go. big guy to win wow. it because I'm looking. I'm looking all the way back to 1985, and all of them are just mids, half forwards, couple of small defenders, forwards, in couple there. of defenders. Obviously you got Hodge, Ryan Brian Lake. Lake. Leo but Barry, you star. Lots of uh, lots of smaller guys, no big guys. Nice one. All right, well, we will break down a bunch more of the odds in the Thursday team show because that's all the Thursday team show is, basically. Yeah. We're going to have like the AFL today, same game multi for the grand final. We'll have our best player looks. First goal. Uh, first goal. Oh, I know who I'm going first goal. Ooh. You'll save it for Thursday. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Right? yeah. Good. Uh, but it's going to be absolutely chockers with all the good stuff. We're going to preview the entire game. It's going to be unreal. It'll be the three of us going live Thursday for the grand final team. What time? Let the people know. I believe it'll be 10 past six, quarter past six around then. Yep. Yeah, it should be about that. Might even go six. Just make it easy. I reckon six. We'll have plenty to talk we'll about. We'll have a big show the anyway. drop, yeah. so why not? A few, a few spicy kombuchas under the belt as well. See what happens. All right, but that'll do the AFL Today Show for today. That's a big chockers midweek madness show. Cool. Hey, we'll do a quick one. Boom. <laughs> one and a half hours later. Off we go. It's just uh, Jim ranting. Yeah, I did have like this. Actually, is wasn't just, too bad compared to. Oh no, this was like seventy percent gym. <laughs> yeah, I could probably rant more if you wanted me to. Do you want me to? No, no, no could, we're good. We're good. Just let's go rant bingo. <laughs> let's go. Just name some Andrew Gillen Dylan's hair. Boom, done. Music. Uh, we will be back tomorrow evening live from six pm. Should be fun. So thank you, to Alex Stanley, for jumping on. Cheers, Jim. How's the turtle neck going? You working on yeah, it? Yeah, nah, look, he looks very calm. I, I don't know if that's so on was, the outside. It was, it was or... the same. So l- last Friday when we thought I'd turtleneck against Port, I got to the pub before the game and everyone was like, "Oh god, I felt nothing." So I was like, "He just feels nothing." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was exactly my point. <laughs> I was say, no, like, but it was like, <laughs> "Feels nothing." But it was just like, no, I expected the Swans to just win just, that game of football. Yeah, you can't feel anything if you don't have a soul. <laughs> yeah, <fine>. but uh, <laughs> so I'm I'm good at the moment. Says you. <laughs> Oh, oh you got, you got right I'm the most emotional person you know, Stats Boy. <laughs> I know, but uh, you must dye your hair or something. Anyway. Yeah, what? you and I got problems. This is it's getting bad. <laughs> this is a HR you issue. Just, you, anyway, you just have anyway, to uh, Well, apparently, thank you to Stats Boy for thank jumping you. on. <laughs> thank you. Jeez, I don't know why. You might not make it to Thursday. Uh, <laughs> anyway... Basically, make sure you're all over the social channels because we've got a bunch of stuff popping off over the next couple of days as well. I'm about to walk through the office. (laughs) Oh, nice. We're going to have all of our office tips, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Facey, IG, X, TikTok, X, again, why not? (laughs) Make sure you- Anything but threads. Anything but threads. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. all the good stuff there. Uh, And get around all the other shows that we have as well. The AFL W Today Show. We have Football Today Podcast, the Cricket Today Podcast, NFL Australia, which is going great guns, and hold all tickets if you like your GGs. Big episode tomorrow because Grand Final Eve. There is Group 1 Manicato, Group 1 Golden Rose on Saturday, plus feature racing at Sandown. Very nice. Get around all of those shows, like Stats Boy getting around a beaten. <laughs> oh, let's go. Oh. It is not. I actually, I don't like those weird little monkey arms of yours. It's too strong. <laughs> so you ever see a chimpanzee rip off like a person's face? It's yes. Like, it's a hard I, I'm going to I watched the you documentary. Just... He's got, those, yes. vibes. Scary, that's He's got those vibes. It's weird. I don't like it. <laughs> anyway, that's it. We'll catch you for the grand final live show Thursday, 6 p.m. across all the channels. Check it out. 
for more AFL Today show. Look after yourselves and remember, the grand final is almost back. <laughs> oh my God, what is that? What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.